Hello, mi amigo. This is the HVAC School El Podcasto. And I'm Brian. This is the podcast that helps you remember some things you might have forgotten along the way, as well as remember some things you forgot to know in the first place. This is a short episode. And we're going to talk about molecular transformator, which is actually, I think it's probably a trademarked copywritten name, all rights reserved to CPS. But we're going to talk about the basics of what it does and maybe why it's called that. But before we do that, we're going to thank our great sponsors. Refrigeration Technologies at Refrigetech.com. White Rogers and Copeland, and especially their connected controls, hvcrschool.com slash connect controls to find out more about Copeland and White Rogers. Fieldpiece at fieldpiece.com. Carrier and carrier.com. The ESCO Institute with over 200 HVACR training solutions, courses, webinars, and simulators. Find out more by going to escogroup.org. All right. So first off, this came from a suggestion. I don't even remember who suggested it, but somebody suggested that I talk about this. And Molecular Transformator is, like I already mentioned, I think it's a brand name that CPS uses. And essentially what it is, it's a version of a tube and shell heat exchanger. And you may say, what's a tube and shell heat exchanger? Tube and shell heat exchanger is just a method of exchanging heat from one fluid medium to another fluid medium where there's tubes passing through and then it's in a shell of usually water or glycol or something like that that then exchanges the heat out of or into, I should say, the medium being circulated through the tubes. In this case, for the molecular transformator, the fluid being moved through the tubes is refrigerant that just came out of a recovery machine. And so what is it doing? Well, it's dropping the temperature and it's using a bucket of water. So you take the molecular transformator, you dunk it in a bucket of water. And so that bucket of water becomes the shell. I mean, it's not a fully contained shell, but it essentially just gives you something that you can transfer heat to. And of course, water being a liquid and also just being water, water has great heat transfer properties, does a really good job of getting heat out of the refrigerant as the refrigerant cycle through it. And so all that that really does is is it drops the temperature. Now let's talk about why it's called the molecular transformator because the goal is to drop the temperature so that way as much as possible, the refrigerant entering the tank is already a liquid. And so if you think about what happens inside of a condenser, it's essentially the same thing. The recovery machine has a condenser in it. They're usually just pretty small because they want to keep recovery machines small. You could make one that was enormous and would fully cool the liquid down to just above ambient temperature the way a regular AC condenser does, but there would be two problems with that. There's two reasons why you don't do that in a recovery machine. And the first is pretty obvious that it would be humongous and we don't want that. So that's an obvious reason. But the second reason is that we don't want a recovery machine to hold a lot of refrigerant because then you got to deal with that. Then you got to get that refrigerant back out of the recovery machine. You can't just leave it in there. And for practical reasons that you don't want to mix refrigerants, but also because you don't want it to sit in there as a liquid and then expand and blow the thing up. So you can't leave any significant refrigerant inside of a recovery machine. And that's where purge modes come in. But again, if you have this humongous condenser coil inside your recovery machine, and then in the end, you end up having to purge it all out, that doesn't really save you any time at that point. So we kind of are left with what we're left with. It's another reason why a lot of the manufacturers of recovery machines are going to microchannel coils in them. And a lot of people hate microchannel because it does damage easier. But one nice thing about microchannel is it does a better job of exchanging heat with less surface area and it holds less refrigerant. So you're not going to hold as much in there, which makes it lighter, makes it smaller and does a more efficient job of exchanging heat. But regardless, what happens inside of a compressor? Because again, in recovery machines, you're taking in vapor, but also liquid. And so recovery machines have to be designed to handle liquid in some way. And it can be maybe an old school strategy where you actually forces it to evaporate before it goes through a compressor, or you have compressors that also function as pumps too. So they have a little bit of give in them. So when it tries to compress that vapor or liquid, it's not going to just explode. And that's a common thing even nowadays with the scroll compressors where they can handle a certain amount of liquid because of that axial and radial compliance. The actual compressor has the ability to flex open a little bit so that way some liquid can pass through. This idea of old compressors that if you got any liquid in them, they would just destroy themselves. It's not always the case. And again, as part of the design of recovery machines, good ones, they have to think about this. In the next podcast, next short, I'm going to talk about pumping versus compression. But the basic idea here is that when you're taking molecules and you're jamming them together, 
you can't jam molecules to become a liquid directly. When you jam molecules together, what happens is, and we're talking vapor here, is that they just move faster. I joke around in some of my classes, I call it more jiggly. And so you can't just directly compress something, at least not. Maybe there is some, somebody's going to say, well, actually you can in certain cases. I'm talking about within, practically within the world that we work in without rejecting heat. So you got to reject some heat off when you're mashing those molecules together to get them to change to a liquid. And that's why in a regular AC system, it's vapor in, vapor out of the compressor. The compressor does not compress the molecules to a liquid. It just mashes them together. And then once you reject the heat off, then they start to settle down and become a liquid. Same thing is true when you're doing recovery. So because we have these small condensers, a lot of times it's still a vapor liquid mix coming out. It's still very high temperature. And both of those things are not great in terms of being able to get refrigerant into the tank without that further causing issues with the efficiency of our recovery machine. So that's why a lot of cases you start off your recovery, it's going great, but then the tank heats up, tank pressure increases, and now it's a real pain in the butt to get refrigerant out of that system. So old school, a lot of people would take and run a hose over the tank. That can help. It's not going to be as efficient as the molecular transformator. Or you can, in some cases, if you have a smaller tank, you can put it into a bucket of ice, things like that people will do. Sometimes that'll work. But what the molecular transformator does is it just makes that easier. So you're putting refrigerant in, you're transferring heat to a bucket of water, it's coming out. Now, the downside is that now you got to do something with that refrigerant that's in the molecular transformator. What's going to happen when you're done with that? It's not an easy answer. The reality is probably in a lot of cases that refrigerant gets vented. Now, obviously, you can deal with it and you can use ball valves, et cetera, et cetera, purge, whatever. But does everybody do that? Probably not. And that's one of the issues there. But let's just go to the name. It's kind of a different sounding name, but that's the goal of what they're trying to do. If there's vapor, they're trying to get that vapor settled down into a liquid. So transforming the molecules from a vapor to liquid. So that's what a molecular transformator is doing. It's changing the molecules from vapor to liquid by way of a tube and shell heat exchanger, otherwise known as a shell and tube heat exchanger. And in this case, the shell is just a bucket of water and the tubes are the tubes that run through the molecular transformator. You can build one yourself just by creating a wrap of tubing and immersing that in the water. A lot of people have created their own and that works fine too. And again, it really becomes more of an issue when you have big systems and you're doing a lot of recovery and that can make a lot of sense. But then at that point, you're probably going to want to learn how to do push-pull method of recovery as well. There's other techniques you can use. Like I said, make one yourself. You can make your own system out of an existing heat exchanger. You can take a tube and shell heat exchanger or a tube and tube heat exchanger like they use in a pool heater and you can cross flow water the opposite direction of the refrigerant and make one out of an existing heat exchanger. And those work great. And again, that's they even make recovery machines that are liquid cooled. So you can hook a hose up to them and that will obviously make it go a lot faster. It just depends on how much refrigerant you're removing. For a typical residential system, your modern recovery machine, your NAVAC or your field piece recovery machine is going to work great. It's going to do just fine. You don't need anything else. But when you're doing more refrigerant or maybe it's really high ambient conditions, and that's where something like molecular transformator might make sense. But just make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you're dealing with that refrigerant appropriately. And I've never actually used the branded version. So some people are probably going to be like, oh, it has a valve right on it that allows you to, I don't know. I've never used one. I know how it works but I don't have one. So I could have looked it up before I did this podcast, but I don't want to take away all the fun from you. And I want to give you something to criticize if I said something wrong. So there you have it. Molecular transformator is basically a way of trying to change your vapor to a liquid and cooling down the refrigerant before you put it in your recovery tank so you can recover better. That's all. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. 